Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick review on uh, iTouch Studio PCBs. I submitted this Motino batch uh, over a month ago at the beginning of February and uh, it took like a month to make these and then shipping was, uh, I, I used a fast DHL shipping which uh, you know only took a couple days but it was kind of frustrating to wait over a month to get these manufactured. Now I have to say the Chinese New Year was at the beginning of February so that was about a week and a week and a half. Um, either way, um, overall the experience was a bit frustrating because uh, communication was uh, not very good at all. Um, uh, once I lost my patients, I tried to contact them and uh, see what's going on. Um, and I didn't get a response back until uh, yesterday about a shipping notice. And in fact, I had already received the PCBs. So that was kind of weird. Uh, I had to panelize these to use their 5x5 five five, uh, centimeter service. So Motinos are uh, quite small. Uh, two of these will fit on a 5x5. Five five. So I had to panelize these in Eagle. And I may do a video on how to do that later on. Um, but uh, I just left a space that I marked with silk screen that I could cut later. And I'll show you how I cut these very easily. Now, I happen to have a tile saw. It's a wet saw for cutting the tile, ceramic, stone, even glass. And this turns out to be the perfect tool to cut uh, straight line PCBs. Uh, this is FR4. It's fiberglass. So the tile saw should be able to handle this without a problem. And I don't even need to put my um, uh, water pump because I won't need it, basically. The only thing I need is this gauge which I uh, mounted here and uh, all I do is put the PCB against it and then uh, this sled slides and it'll cut the PCB in the same spot every time. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to uh, cut a couple of these PCBs. It goes really fast. it is. There's barely any dust so I, I didn't even wear a dust mask but I did wear some eye protection like my trusty glasses. Uh, I'm really happy with the results and it's much better than uh, having uh, this these vis cord or uh, using uh, shears or anything else to cut them. Uh, the, the cut is actually much cleaner than the cut that uh, was on the outside from MyTouch Studio, so I'm really happy. So this is a good method uh, to cut PCBs if you have straight lines only. Here's uh, how the MyTouch Studio PCBs look like. Um, all of these are oh, 603 components. This is a SOD 23. This is a crystal, uh, actually a resonator. This is a, an 80 mega chip. This is another 0603. 0603 here. The silk screen is kind of uh, misaligned on all of the boards, so uh, it's pretty much all the way around. Uh, on the back, it's probably the same. Um, I'm pretty happy though with the silk screen. Some of these uh, are very thin uh, fonts, and this is actually better than the. OSH Park silkscreen. Uh, OSH Park comes out sort of blobby. You can barely read like this uh, uh, writing right here. They do add a marking here uh, which is just on the back of my boards uh, fortunately. Now because I panelized these boards only only half of them will have this marking and it actually goes behind the RFM 12B radio so if you buy that version you'll never see it. It seems like a small percentage of these boards, maybe 20 to 20 percent, have a smeared silk screen and this is clearly a fingerprint. Someone probably grabbed these boards 
uh, from the machine before the silk screen was cured. So I see occasional uh, blobs of messed up silk screen uh, like that or here's another board, this is more obvious. Uh, it's kind of it's not it's not a problem really, but you know if you if I sell these and my customers get them, they'll probably wonder what's going on, you know. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's a fully assembled Motino. I used a homemade metal stencil that I made uh, out of a soda can and you can check my other videos to see how I did that. Uh, basically I spread solder paste and then I placed the components uh, using a hand tool that I made for uh, rapid pick and place. Um, and the results are very good. One thing I noticed though is uh, once I bake the boards, the silk screen uh, on the bottom uh, tends to yellow. Uh, this is not very obvious here, but uh, like com compared to white silk screen, it will be more obvious. So this is uh, an unpopulated, unbaked board. This is a baked board. It's not really visible, but uh, it's more obvious with the naked eye. I really like the hassle finish on these boards because it's much easier to rework any of these small components if I have to. Uh, and even hand soldering components is much easier if you have a hassle finish. And it's pretty, pretty leveled. This probably wouldn't work for BGA devices or very, very, very fine pitch uh, components. But anything like above uh, 0 0.5 millimeter pitch uh, is quite doable by hand and the solder really helps you uh, with the hand soldering. So overall I'm pretty happy with the quality of the PCBs. Uh, I would probably rate Ita Studio a 7 out of 10 just because of the long wait and poor communication and also some of the small quirks that I found on the, on the PCBs. They also uh, do not v-score or cut the PCBs individually if you use any of their standard services so I had to panelize these myself and then cut them um, with a tile saw which went pretty quick but you know it's an extra step that um, I wouldn't mind if uh, would be done for me. So you know if you don't mind the long wait uh, you, you probably get pretty good boards Again, these are not very fine traces, but the vias are 13 mil, and uh, some of the finer traces, uh, I don't see any problem with those. So, uh, yeah, you should give it a try and uh, see how it goes. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for video updates and check my blog at lowpowerlab.com.